Welcome back everybody, my name is Gamma Trap, one word, and today we are covering wood. There are several videos already planned for this entire wood series, so be sure to subscribe and click the bell if you'd like to be notified when each video drops. But without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so this is the fourth video in our wood series, and we are going to be drawing a treasure chest. Now the first three videos were a wood texture tutorial, wood uh, texture in a more organic kind of growth, how it kind of twists around a tree stump. And then the third one was a shield that showed a little more structure and how you can make planks and uh, rim the edge of the shield with like metal and fun stuff. So this one's going to build off of that. Uh, I'm going to pass over a lot of stuff that we've already covered in previous tutorials so we don't like repeating ourselves in this tutorial doesn't have to take too incredibly long. So if you're confused at any point during this entire tutorial, just go back and watch uh, those videos if you need help figuring out those things like wood texture for example so as usual our brushes are just going to be the hard round pressure opacity and the soft round pressure opacity the hard round is actually going to be a big help because we're dealing with perspective with the treasure chest and instead of having to make like a a grid or have a really in-depth understanding of perspective because this is just meant to be fast just a fast loose stylized treasure chest you're just going to make some planks real quick and this is in turn also going to draw lines and the hard brush is perfect for this because it leaves these cool lines. Now if we take this, hit control T, and hold down control and adjust this, we can shift the perspective or, or the, uh, yeah, perspective is great, or just, you know, the angle of this image real quick. And this one's going to go by probably, hopefully a little faster than the last couple. They've taken me a while to draw. And now we're just going to hold down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. Copy that over. And if you hold down shift, you can move it perfectly aligned. We're just going to draw it over and it's going to make its own layer. We're going to go to edit, transform, flip horizontal. And we want these to touch so we see good, you know, lines. And I kind of want this to be a little further down. So I'm going to actually delete that layer, grab this one, hold down control. I'm going to move this down a bit more. At this point, you have the option to adjust anything how you like. And we're just going to do the same thing we did before until you got it pretty much how you like it. And this is just handling like the bulk of of making sure the planks will line up. Now with stylized stuff, we're going to we're going to stretch, we're going to skew and we're going to make interesting shapes and stuff. Right now, this is extraordinarily boring. It looks kind of like Lincoln logs if you <laughs> knew what those were like a log cabin kind of thing. And with these two layers selected, I'm just going to merge them together. So now they're one single layer and we can kind of start working from here. I'm gonna make a new layer, and I want this one, I want this treasure chest to be kind of, kind of cool, you know? So I'm thinking, this lid, it's gonna go up like this. Right now is the perfect time to just mess around with shapes, and we're actually, we're actually just gonna draw. <laughs> I know, it's crazy, actually drawing. The main thing is you kinda wanna focus on perspective just a little bit just at first just to get your your orientation situation figured out i'm going to get to my eraser and kind of clean this up a bit and if you if you're worried about like erasing what you've made so far you can always just mask we've we've discussed masks a lot in this uh series and we're going to continue <laughs> to, to talk about how cool masks are but let me just make this shape real quick i kind of want this chest to be kind of you know got this interesting groove but i also need to make it a little lower on this side over here because that side's a little farther away from us. We do want some perspective, even though it's a stylized piece, we do want some perspective involved. And color will be a big thing pretty soon too. But right now we're just trying to figure out the shapes. Shapes are the biggest thing. It's gonna save us a whole lot of time. Once we get basic shapes down, the rest of it's just gonna fall into place. Now let's get the a darker color so we can figure out this a bit better. We still have, like, you don't have to press completely down and cover up those cool lines you made. You know, kind of be a little gentle. We're being a little, little gentle at the moment. Because we don't want to erase too much of that information because that those lines are kind of important. That's why we have them on different layers, so we always know where those lines are. To help us with our perspective and to make sure that the planks, you know, are preserved. And we can just kind of use that to continue on forward. And if you'd like, grab a darker color, shrink your brush down. I'm going to lower the opacity just so it's easier for me to see. I'm just going to like, you know, kind of draw on the new layer, roughly where the planks are, and kind of give them a little bend to sort of, you know, keep the 
interesting stylized stuff kind of alive. Now, where do we want the lid? I'm kind of I kind of like this layer here, this this one to be the lid. So I'm going to go forward like that. So first, I'm just going to make sure that's how I need it to be. I'm going to flip the canvas here and we're using those planks as a guiding line. Find a nice little stroke that you like. And now that we have our planks figured out roughly, I'm going to finish up making this a solid shape. Once you have the shape all opaque, all well colored in, and you can merge these layers, and that's what I'm going to do here pretty soon, then you can make masks and clean up and add detail and all that fun, really fun, cool stuff. Extra fun. So much, so much fun. <laughs> it sounds sarcastic when I say it like that. It actually is a lot of fun. <laughs> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't talk like that. And now, while we have this a chance, again, like in this shape, in this kind of like figuring things out phase, it's the perfect time to add, you know, just little, little character, character marks, little characteristics. And we can, we can add the wood texture in a little bit later here pretty soon. But right now, we have the opportunity to make something very, very cool. Just figure, now we gotta figure out this shape. That's actually kind of important. We gotta figure out how we want this shape to be. I'm just gonna make the brush roughly the same size as the plank to save a little time. I'm gonna clean this up pretty soon, but right now, I'm just gonna get that basic information in. Same with this side. Now we can also add in our metal. We could do this in a new layer, which is probably the smartest idea. I'm gonna go dark side first. I'm just gonna follow along that rim for now. Now I'm gonna eventually probably want, actually, before we go too hard, turn that metal layer off and figure out this wood shape, just, just real quick. Sorry if I seem a little scatterbrained. I want to make sure everything is, is good. I'm trying to save time while also teach. So now these are roughly how I like it. I'm going to merge these two down. We have the information preserved. We made the planks. We, we got everything good. Now it's one single layer. And now we can make a mask. So let's figure out the shape of this chest. Let's be a fun little fantasy chest. I wanted to make sense. <laughs> but we do have the rule of cool to play with. Which is pretty nice. So it has to look cool in order for it to actually make sense. I'm gonna make a new layer. Now that I have the shape here, I'm gonna really like accentuate the shape a bit. And I made the new layer, so if I do anything weird, I'm not, I don't run the risk of messing anything up. I don't want these, this chest to have like corners that kind of come out a bit like that. So we're going to make a new layer. This one is going to be our metal layer. So we're going to select a darker color for the metal, for the shadows. If you want, you can make this into a clipping mask. But I kind of like the ability to add new stuff to it. And we're going to make the brush a little smaller. We're going to follow along that plank because the lid opens up. Leave a little room for yourself so you know where the lid actually is. And if we get a lighter color, we can handle the top part and shrink the brush a bit because farther away, Things are smaller. I don't know if you knew this, but it's true. I'm just going to flip the canvas because it's uh, easier on me to draw like this. Right now, the lid doesn't quite line up, but that's that's perfectly fine. We could fix it up later. We can just take this opportunity to clean things up a little. Just line things up. Because it's on a separate layer, you can erase without worrying about messing with things at the moment. Which is why we did it. Because we're smart like that. Now, we can add in some planks in the top section. This won't be too hard, because you do have the guide you have from earlier. As long as you just kind of 
follow along that guide a bit because this is a bent situation. You don't have to worry as much. Okay, I'm gonna flip the canvas a bit. You have a little bit of wiggle room to really mess things up. I'm gonna rotate the canvas because up and down is a lot easier than side to side for me. I know, I know we're just running through all this, but, but understanding the shapes and figuring out the basic details will save you a ton of time, especially when you're messing with weird, stylized, crazy stuff. Warping stuff and uh, making it look very interesting is, is our main goal here. Now I'm gonna add a little darkness to the bottom of the rim on the shadowed side. The majority of the, the real juice of the piece is gonna start taking shape after we start like like once we're once we're down, once we're we're set, we're like, okay, yeah, this is the rules we place for ourselves. We want the, all the rims to have this, this kind of like lip. I'm gonna grab a bit of the shadowed area over here to add shadow of the rim over here. I'm gonna shrink the uh, shrink the brush down a bit. All right, now let's fix up these angles and fun stuff like that. Let's actually make these things start making sense. Now that we've got the understanding how we want things, I'm gonna do a little bit of rotating because this is a horizontal piece and it's a lot easier for my my poor hands to draw up and down faster you gotta do what's best for your overall health <laughs> and ease and efficiency now i'm gonna merge all these layers together so we have one solid layer so now you can just paint and erase from this point on and if you want to warp stuff now's your chance saves you a ton of time later down the line you really figure out these shapes kind of like the idea of there being like a little like it doesn't quite fit very flush. I don't know. Always kind of like that. To me, it really helped solidify the idea that this is like a maybe a, a haphazardly put together chest. Maybe not not the best craftsman. If it's a fantasy kind of thing, and there's like maybe it's not the best. Uh, maybe a peasant put this together. Uh, maybe not the best blacksmith. Maybe didn't have the best tools or technology. And maybe they were in a rush. I'm gonna add some little details. A little bit of nicks and cuts, but trying to make sure we maintain the basic information that we put down for ourselves already. You can also, at this point, add in uh, handles, spikes, uh, locks. Locks are obviously pretty big on treasure chests, you know? Just any little detail you want to add, like a, a cool, like, Pirates of the Caribbean kind of skull or something, just, like, inlaid. You know, maybe even some, like, carvings on the wood. You can handle that whenever you like. But this is a great time to put that information down for yourself so you understand kind of what your, your end goal is a bit. In this early stages, you want to make sure that you are putting in as much information as you need for later. You want to make a, something close to a finished chest before you even start on any real level of detail. Because it saves you a bunch of time. Not like detail as in like, you know, where you want the lines to be, where you want the, how you want the shapes of the, the outline or the silhouette of the chest to look. No, not like that. Like that, that's, we can handle that now. But I mean like filigree or runes or any, any craziness like that. The plan is in these early stages to just get the chest to make sense completely like to you so that while you're working on it throughout the, the course of the process never at any point are you like lost you figure all that stuff out now how you want the outline to look where you want the the planks to be all that process belongs to this this part all of those uh all of those ideas and all of that that work belongs to this part of the process i'm just going to mess with the outline a bit I kind of want these rims here to really sell. And if you need to, you can correct previous uh, work that you've already done. But just, you know, bear in mind, you put that information down there earlier for yourself. So make sure that you don't mess it up too much. Because if you, if you start messing with uh, the foundation, like, for example, the planks and how they line up, start messing with that too much and you don't have a very good understanding of how it affects the overall look of the thing, you might have some trouble on your hands. If you think you got a really good understanding of just the basics of, of perspective and all that fun stuff, then you should, you know, don't worry about it. Feel free to experiment. This is the time to mess around. Now, pretty soon, I'm gonna start putting in the texture. And when I start that, I'm just gonna time lapse it 
and y'all can just enjoy watching the process of how I go about doing that. But right now, like I said, the main goal is to sort of sell your idea to yourself. Get the lines, get the basics, keep it simple, because this is a stylized piece. We don't want to overcomplicate a stylized piece without, you know, unless we need to, and we rarely need to. Now I gotta figure out how I want these metal borders to look, these rims, if I want them to be more vertical or a bit of both. And I'm thinking a bit of both. Do a bit of both, we can make the vertical ones be the most, and the horizontal ones still be there, not the, not the layer on top, because you have to think about how these things are made, how they lay down on top of each other when they're created. Do a bit of that tasty, juicy lighting really helps the whole thing. And we're gonna cover metal, I think two tutorial series away. So right now we're finishing the wood, the first part of the wood, and we're gonna go to foliage and grass and trees and stuff. And then after that becomes, is the time for the metal, I think. I'm, I've been looking forward to that tutorial series ever since I started. So if, if you're looking forward to it as well, then oh Lord, you do be in the right place. I'm gonna add our edge. Put a bit of it on both sides, making sure that the darker shadowed edge is a darker shadowed, still a highlight. And the way we go about doing that is, if you're confused, I would suggest going to, uh, I think we talked about it last in the stone tutorial, maybe? But probably, I think the wood tutorial will still be helpful because I do think I talk about the stepping process, how we handle lighting and going from shadow and darkness. I think we'd cover that pretty well now as well. And I'm just putting this stuff here right now. Usually this is like some of the last stuff you do, but I'm just putting this here just so I can tell, you know, I'm, I'm testing. I'm seeing if my like, if I like it myself personally enough, be like, okay, yeah, we're ready to get into the actual detail stuff. And it's usually, I like to save that for the last. So what I like to do is I do these little tests to see like if I'm, cause I, I do it just a touch of it, just a little bit of the detail stuff. If I, if I imagine in my head, okay, imagine that, but on the rest of it, if I like it, then I can actually get started on the real real texture detail stuff. And I think, I think I like it. Yeah, I'd say we're about there. I'm not gonna worry about making a handle or a lock or anything like that. This is just a quick one to worry about structure and perspective and warping and trying to keep it all stylized and simple and fun. So I think we're good. Yeah, now I'm just gonna do uh, the polish real quick. Not the polish. Polish comes with extra credit, but just the details, you know? I'm gonna do that real quick. See you in a second.
right, not bad, not bad. Okay, so that's pretty good. I don't want to go too crazy with uh, all these textures too much, but the basic textures, basic structure, basic shape, basic understanding of how to make a three-dimensional isometric-ish structure now is is yours. That, that knowledge, that power, be careful, be responsible with that, is now yours. And we're going to go further and further and further and further into detail of how we go about making these pieces the more... Uh, <laughs> these tutorial series progress right now it's number four just imagine where you're going to be at tutorial number 10 <laughs> you know so i'm just going to do a little bit of extra credit on this thing which is where we just polish up just a little bit get the lighting just a little bit more you know dialed in and make it fit on the pedestal here and then i'll get back to you in a second So there we go. That's a little extra credit. For the extra credit, if you're new here, if this is your first video, I like to just, you know, make it so it looks like it fits in the, in the setting that we kind of have. Like I've got this little platform with the grass and the dirt and got the light coming down. I just want to make it look like it all kind of ties together. Just a little little extra credit you know, on my part. You see how that works out now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. This has just been a, uh, a more isometric, structured, three-dimensional kind of way of handling more wooden stuff. And of course, I've added some more metal in here, and I cannot wait to get into actual metal tutorial. Oh, I'm trying to contain myself here. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, fun fact, I had to actually re-record this entire thing. I did. I recorded it already and it was corrupted and messed up somehow. And like last minute, I had to just completely redo the entire thing. I, it was, it was tragic. It hurt. <laughs> I had a chest. I already had everything ready. I had everything finished, but I had to redo it all and it made me sad, but we got it done. We got it figured out. Hopefully it was enjoyable. Hopefully it was educational and hopefully you come around for next episode of wood. But we're not doing wood next, we're doing grass next. Grass, foliage, bushes, vines, trees, and the like. So I hope you enjoy it. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, subscribe to see more. Uh, click the bell if you'd like to be notified when the next tutorial drops. Thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever-loving out of you for supporting the ever-loving out of me. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.